Hello everybody, my name is Tove, and this is going to be my guide on the Altar of Blood, specifically the first five waves. So in case you missed it, the Altar of Blood came out on July 10th, and it is a three-player cooperative wave defense mode. As a quick preface, this is all being recorded on day of release, and so this is all accurate to the best of my knowledge, but I do apologize if there's any major mistakes. Playing through the Altar of Blood costs one player 100 energy to start a match, and then 20 energy per round. The possible prizes are Remnants of a Rift, Kafra Stones, Blackstone Armors, as well as Tri, Tet, and Pen Armors, including Boss Armors. There's also Knowledge to be gained, Gold Bars for each boss you kill, and every time you beat a wave for the first time, you'll be given a special reward. After you've completed the first five waves, the fifth wave counts as a checkpoint, and you can start the game from the fifth wave instead of starting at the first wave again any time in the future. This guide is going to assume that you already have access to the Altar of Blood, and if for some reason you don't have access to it yet, I have a guide on gaining access to it down in the description. So let's jump into the requirements here. First, I'll display here that this is the gear that I did it with. I'd recommend having close to soft cap AP and DP. I'd say 235 with tri Kudum or Tet Kudum would be the minimum I'd attempt this with. Of course, if you have friends that are more geared and don't mind if you play with them, then that's completely fine. And it definitely depends on classes as well as some classes are better than others. This is Black Desert Online, of course, and gear requirements are subjective, so I'm going to leave that choice to you. This is just my recommendation. Now, for the items you need, you're going to want to have a ton of health potions. I'd buy as many as your weight can carry after you've gotten everything else done, because you cannot buy more potions whilst you're in the minigame. You're going to need med kits to revive teammates. This is the only way to revive a teammate in the middle of a wave if they go down, unless you're a witcher wizard. So make sure you're stocked up on these. In case you don't know, you can buy these from any general goods vendor in any city. You're going to want to have Body Enhancement Villa buffs active, as the stats you get from them will definitely help throughout the fight. Additionally, I'd recommend going to a church and buying the Attack and Protection church buffs. These are going to cost 5 1 gram gold bars each, or about a mil for the both of them, and they're going to help you out quite a bit. You should also be using one of the Kron Meals. The Kron Meals have all been buffed this patch, and they are all very good now. I'd say it's relatively subjective as to which one is the best one for PvE now, especially for this type of PvE, so I'll leave that choice up to you, but make sure you're using one of them. Drafts, albeit a bit expensive, are very, very useful here, and especially if you're just teetering around that gear requirement, I'd highly recommend using them as well. Now these things, perfumes are pretty damn expensive, but if you want to go that extra mile, or if you're just kind of teetering on that gear like I said, I'd recommend bringing some. Maybe only using that as well as drafts for the last wave, like wave 4 or 5. What you want to bring is up to you, but that's definitely something that could help you out. I'd also recommend activating a type of furniture buff before you go into this fight. I was going to recommend the Ancient Camel statue, as they were about 5 million, 20 uses, 9 AP for an hour, and were readily available in the market, however they appear to be sold out now. There are plenty of alternatives, I'm not going to get into all the different furniture buffs here, and maybe these will be back in stock by the time this video is out, that's pretty unlikely, but another buff that you could take in is a furniture buff. I should really probably just make a buff guide, because these are similar to buffs that you'd take into a node war and such, but you're probably also going to want to go to Caroline here in Heidel, here it is in the map in case you don't know, and after you've done an Amity minigame with her to the point where she has 50 Amity, you can talk with her and spend 25 energy to get a buff that gives you 10% extra crit damage for a half hour. This is a nice cheap buff that I'd recommend grabbing as well, although do keep in mind that it does cost quite a bit of energy to play through the Altar of Blood, so watch your energy as you do this. Finally, if you're new to the Altar of Blood, which I'm assuming that you are if you're watching this guide, you're probably going to want some Nightmare Fragments. A Nightmare Fragment can be created by using simple alchemy with 40 black energy residues and one memory fragment. Black Energy Residue is an item that can be obtained by killing any monster in any zone as far as I'm aware, however the drop rate for it is much much higher when grinding in, in and around Duvencroon, so all the Dregan areas. The Nightmare Fragment I just mentioned that you make with the Memory Fragment and the Black Energy Residue will allow you and your party to retry if you fail stage. In this instance, you have to make whoever has the Nightmare Fragment the party leader and have them send it in. Alright, I think I've talked to you guys ear enough about gear requirements and recommendations, as well as buff recommendations. There's one final potential supply you can use called a Flare of the Ancients, which is made through a bunch of different alchemy materials combined together, and it will stun all the enemies around you inside the Altar of Blood. However, it's relatively expensive to to make, and I would not recommend using it for these 1 through 5 waves. However, if you do wish to make it, or wish to see the crafting recipe for it, or the previous item I discussed that is unique to the Altar of Blood, these recipes are available on the wiki page that I have linked down in the description. So, onwards to the Altar of Blood, in case you don't know how to get there, you press Escape and go over to War or Co-op, and hit Altar of Blood. Here you can press Yes, and it will automatically match you with two other players that are looking for an Altar of Blood group. Alternatively, you can hit Escape and hit Find Party and look for a group here. 
There are discords available for it. I believe the Muramak and Gaifin discord now also support Altar of Blood. Or you can try and go with the guild member. I mean, you could also spam in server chat or something as well, but you know, good luck with that. Pearlabus has given us a relatively decent wiki page detailing everything in the Altar of Blood, and so that is available in case you'd like to reference. Here is that nightmare fragment I was talking about before. Here is the recipe for the Flare of the Ancients. And it even gives you a list here detailing the theme of monsters you'll be fighting through each wave, the boss you'll be fighting, the reward for defeating that boss, and the one-time bonus reward you'll receive through your Y challenges for defeating that wave for the first time. Once again, this page will be down in the description. Alright, so maybe my game was glitched, but it wouldn't let me go into observe mode while I was actually in the Altar of Blood itself. If that is a glitch, hopefully it'll be patched soon, or maybe I was having a glitch on my side, I don't know. Whatever the case, it wouldn't let me get a top-down view, so I'm here. here. Here's the arena. Uh, bear with me here. This isn't gonna be the whole guide, I swear. I just wanted to give a top-down view from the beginning. When you spawn in, you're gonna come into the arena, you're gonna have the leader pay 100 energy, and then talk to the thing in the center here to pay 20 more energy, and it's going to turn into this big sphere, even though I have it as a star. Once you've done that, waves of enemies will start spawning. There's gonna be four entrances. There's one big, thick entrance towards the top, which has a longer path that they have to walk before they get towards the middle, and there's going to be three smaller entrances which has a lot less to walk before they have to get there as well. Note that a lot of enemies use ranged attacks and so they don't actually have to go right here, they can stop from like right here on these stairs, or right here on these stairs, there's stairs by the way, and they can shoot at it from there. The mob spawns are timed and each wave lasts in my experience for around 7 to 8 minutes. After this amount of time, a boss will spawn, your core will go invulnerable, and you have to burn down the boss. Once the boss is killed, you pay 20 more energy and you repeat the process. Don't forget to grab the loot from the boss itself though. Most of this should be actual gameplay for the rest of this, but I may reference this sheet one more time in the future in case I need to for something, because again, I don't have a good top-down view yet, so yeah, there you go. In the background for this, I will have the footage of my first illusion a little bit sped up, but there isn't really that much in specific that you have to see here. The first illusion is goblins, and there are throwers and shamans that have some ranged, but this first wave is relatively straightforward. I believe this first wave was made specifically to give you a feel for how the illusions work. Illusions are also waves, by the way. Like, wave one is the first illusion. And so there isn't really that much to talk about here. As I mentioned before, there are four different spawn areas, the enemies spawn in waves, and of course, if they do all manage to walk up to the sphere, they're going to hit it and burn it down relatively quickly. Even if you're relatively undergeared for this activity though, this wave shouldn't give you too many problems. This is essentially the warm-up round where you can just ignore mechanics and face tank it. There isn't that much to worry about, you'll be completely fine. As I mentioned before, if any players do die, you are going to have to resurrect them with a medical kit. The way to do this is to walk over them and do left control over their body, and then there's going to be an option you can click to resurrect them. If you are a witch or wizard, you can also use the resurrect spell to do this, and since the medkit has a 5 minute cooldown, your resurrect has a 10 minute cooldown, you can actually revive people more than once within a 5 minute period, which in my opinion makes you slightly more valuable here if your team is dying a lot. After about 6 or 7 minutes, by my estimate, has elapsed, the regular monsters will stop spawning, you can finish them off, and the boss will spawn, and the boss for the first illusion is Gaeth. He behaves in a very similar way to all the other times you'll fight Gaeth, as do most of the bosses that you'll encounter here. But do give him a little bit of respect, as since it is in the illusions here, he is much, much more powerful. If one of your teammates is dead and has not gotten a tag on the boss, they will not get a reward for beating this illusion, so make sure that you revive them beforehand. For the second illusion, you'll be fighting red orcs. This illusion is relatively straightforward, except this time red orc mages and elite red orc mages will be spawning. These magic users will spawn both from the giant ass portal in the front, as well as the other three side entrances. If not focused down properly, these red orc mages will destroy your sphere very quickly. There are no other unique enemies that pose very much of a threat on this wave, of course don't let them just swarm your sphere, but do make sure that you're bringing down these mages quickly and you shouldn't have any problems with this illusion. Org will be the boss to speak of on the second illusion, and once again fighting him is pretty straightforward. There aren't that many things that you have to watch out for on this boss. Just stay safe, stay high in health, make sure you're drinking your potions, and it should go fine. The third illusion is Hexe Sanctuary Skeletons, and this is where you're going to be finding a bit more mob diversity here in the Altar of Blood. Through this wave, you'll have to fight skeleton wolves that will run past you very quickly in attempts to quickly take down the base, as well as hordes of slow-moving skeletons and skeleton archers. Later on you'll get Whitmiths or Whitmurths or whatever the higher tier skeleton warriors are, but you don't really have to worry too much about those. 
Throughout the third illusion, your highest priority to kill is any skeleton archers that are actually in range of your orb. Whenever no skeleton archers are in range of your orb, or anywhere near its range, you're going to want to keep burning down the skeleton wolves. Anything that isn't a skeleton wolf will walk very slowly towards your base, and so you should have plenty of time to deal with it before it gets there. Right before the boss, Hexi Marie herself, spawns, a giant horde of skeleton wolves will pour in through the main entrance, the giant ass portal in the north. We're going to call that the north. When this happens, you're going to want to stay next to the orb and just spam as much AoE damage towards it as you can to deal with as many wolves as possible. Don't be too alarmed about this part though, because when Hexa Marie spawns, your orb will go invulnerable, the wave has successfully been defended, and you can deal with the wolves and any other skeletons remaining and the boss in your own time. Hexa Marie is the first boss that starts getting a little bit difficult, as she does have quite a bit of strange mobility, she teleports around, and she has a lot of burst damage. I don't know Hexa Marie's actual mechanics very well, so I can't give you too much actual advice in this fight, I apologize about that. Just make sure you're keeping your health topped up and try to keep facing her and block when you can. She hasn't full to zeroed myself or any of my teammates, and so if you keep drinking your potions, you should be okay. The fourth illusion is Sawnills, and this is where things get quite a bit more complicated. In this wave, the monsters stop being complete paper and start getting a little bit tankier. The regular monsters in this wave aren't that much of a threat, however, there are Sawnill Elders that spawn, and they do use a ranged attack. These will be the second highest priority throughout the wave. The difficult part is, after a few minutes into the wave, bombers will spawn. These guys are quite literally a small unit holding a giant bomb, and they will slowly walk towards your base. Note, however, that they will not spawn, as far as I'm aware, from the northern giant portal, and instead, all of them will be spawning from the three side entrances at the west, south, and east. Whenever these spawn, you have to burn them down before they get to the bottom of the stairs that they are walking down, or they will quickly charge at your base, taking about 20% of its health from what I've seen. Also, when they do this charge attack, if you're in between them and the base, they will instantly kill you. To briefly reiterate, you want to be prioritizing killing these bombers before for anything else. After that, your focus should be around the base if there are a ton of units around it, and if there aren't that many units around the base, you should be focusing on taking out the ranged users, the elders, and then burn all the trash from there. The boss of the fourth illusion is the Sawnel Siege Captain. His fight is once again relatively straightforward, but you're gonna want to watch out for his little dash body slam slam attack kind of thing. I don't know what exactly to call it. He basically tries to jump on you, and if he jumps on you, he does a lot of damage. Depending on your DP, you're likely going to want to take this boss quite a bit slower, as his attack can probably kill you in a about two hits if you eat those slams. Remember that you can use medical kits to revive teammates if they go down, and this arena is very big and so you can kite the boss around if needed. My recommendation is that if one player goes down, you have whoever has aggro drag the boss as far away as possible, but slowly so that they don't lose aggro, whereas the other player can go up and use a medical kit to revive the player that went down. The fifth illusion, and the final one I'll be covering in this video, is full of imps, and this is quite a doozy. This illusion is much much more difficult I find than the previous four. The first three illusions are relatively easy, the fourth one is a little bit of a DPS check, but really nothing to be very concerned about, and this fifth one is gonna kinda tear you apart if you found the previous ones to be difficult. The enemies are much more difficult, especially the imp scouts. These imp scouts use ranged attacks and spawn in waves, and you're gonna see in this footage I actually die almost immediately when I walk up a little farther and I take aggro instead of the orb. If you let a pack that's get onto your center sphere for more than a few seconds, you're probably going to lose, so you're gonna have to make sure you're looking around and taking out these packs as quickly as possible whenever you see them spawned and hitting. One strategy you could use is to wait to see them attacking the sphere, and once they have its aggro on the sphere instead of you, you run up and kill them immediately. Don't let them hit too long though, because you'll definitely take a lot of base damage for it. To make things more complicated, in the middle of the wave, Leighton will spawn. In case you haven't fought a Leighton before, he has a bunch of debuffs to your attack and casting speed, and this Leighton is no different. The good news is, is that it doesn't seem to attack the sphere very much, and instead he's going to aggro one of your players. The best advice I can give to this is to have one player kite the Leighton around as much as possible, whilst going around in circles and still killing as much as you can. Your highest priority in this wave is to kill all the scouts that are going to range down your turret. Whenever the scouts are dead, clean around the center of the orb and make sure that no meliers are hitting it. And I'd recommend focusing on the Leighton only when there's nothing else to kill, because he won't be going for the sphere and if you just keep cutting him around you can mostly ignore him. If you have a staff class, using retardando onto the Leighton is very useful as it slows him down quite a bit. This can be said for all the bosses for that matter though, something I should have included earlier probably. If you've been using an offensive spirit stone throughout these fights, you may want to switch to a defensive of spirit stone just for this wave. Of course, it's preference, and you do have to burn the scouts down quickly enough, but they do really hurt, so do be careful. Once you've dealt with all the mobs, or the time limit has elapsed, and you have to still clean them up, the Red Nose boss will spawn. This Red Nose is the same as any Red Nose you've fought before, except he hurts a lot more. He still has his roar attack, and if you get hit by his body slam, you're probably dead or very, very low. However, his body slam is relatively choreographed, so you do have some time to react to it. As with all the other bosses, drink your potions, take it slow, and make sure you're focused 
focusing more on what they're doing and dodging their mechanics than you are actually dishing out damage. These boss fights have no time limit, and it would really suck to go through the entire wave just to fail to the boss. Once you've taken down Red Nose, congratulations, you have now cleared half of the illusions available currently, and you've hit a checkpoint. For future runs, you will start at the fifth wave instead of the first if you choose to. This is a relatively big deal in my opinion, as unless I'm mistaken, the fifth illusion, the distrust reward box, is the first reward box that has a chance of giving a yellow grade boss armor. Alright, I think that about sums up this guide. As a quick recap, make sure you're taking your time with these bosses, using any debuffs you have on them if they can be affected by it, such as Retardando. Make sure you bring in enough health potions and set your fairies in advance, because once you get into the arena you cannot get more potions and you cannot change your fairy settings. The near redundant amount of buffs I discussed before really isn't for the first three waves, but more so to burn down the bombers fast enough on the fourth and to simply live on the fifth wave. Remember that if you bring in nightmare fragments, you'll be able to restart if you fail a wave, and I'd really recommend doing this before you've hit that checkpoint. After you've hit that checkpoint, I'd recommend bringing them in as well if you're trying to push higher waves. My highest wave right now is 7, and I don't think my gear is quite up to snuff to get past it right now, so I probably won't be able to make a guide on future waves for quite a bit of time. Whenever I do get the gear to defeat these waves, though, I will be sure to make a guide on it, but I've heard that waves 9 and 10 are ridiculously difficult, so we'll, we'll see about all that. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this helps somebody out. I did put quite a bit of effort into this, although you may not be able to tell. Despite having made quite a few videos, my editing skills are really subpar still, so everything does take me quite a bit of time. If you like this video, do please leave it a like. Comment below if you have any sort of feedback on this guide or any future guides you may want to see. Things you like, things you didn't like, I don't know. If you'd like to see future content from me, do please hit that subscribe button. It's completely free, it takes very little time, and helps me out a ton. I'd really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best of luck in your loot boxes. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.